Buckle up, we're running through the coolest stuff I picked up in 2022. People always ask. That's cool, but can you just tell me what practice management system you use? That's a thing you're gonna find out this video. Okay, here we go, rapid fire. First up, Superhuman email app. Oh baby, if you aren't using Superhuman yet, you are missing out. So Superhuman, super basic. It's basically like, kind of reinvented keyboard shortcuts for emails, but everything is super fast and snappy. You can set up little like snippets for common blocks of text that you reuse a lot. So like a Calendly link, and you put that in here. That's a new snippet. And now when I compose an email, I can do semicolon and then Calendly link and just pull that in. I don't know, honestly, I made fun of Superhuman for years, like years, and then I finally got it, and it's just it's just a way better way to do email. Especially if you mess with a huge volume of email like like we do and what we and what what we like we do and what we do. It's 30 bucks a month. That's why I made fun of it for a long time. Paying for email? Are you kidding me? Like email should be a basic human right, right? Superhuman.com, check it out. Okay, stick with me here, gang. Using your watch as an alarm clock. Benefits? Don't wake the partner up. And it's just it, like, it's just a little rumble. It's just much more tender than your normal alarm clock that you get angry at. Everybody I tell about this, when you charge your watch, I don't know your life. When you're in the shower, when you're at work, I, it doesn't matter. It's just a better way to wake up. X Snapper and Brandbird. So they're both little like screenshotting apps. And I didn't realize until I had an app for screenshots like just how many screenshots we take these days. I used to make fun of these apps as like, oh, look at these. Internet think boy is trying to make their screenshots look cool, but they're actually really handy. One really helpful context is oftentimes the screenshot that you take is not in an aspect ratio that like is gonna look good where you're sharing it. For example, like a phone screen screenshot. If you put that in an email and the email client tries to make it the full width of the email, that picture is gonna be so long, like shockingly long. With a screenshot tool, you can like put that in a landscape background. So it's, you just have more control over like the sizing. Anyways, I've been using those a bunch. X Snappers, Mac OS, Bird Studio is the best one I found that's like web-based, you can use it on anything. The Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022. Oh baby, buckle up for this. Come here, big boy. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. What are you 13 years old, Jason? Listen, bub, here's the thing. Obviously gaming chairs are made for extended sitting, optimized for lethargy, easy to clean your Mountain Dew and flaming hot Cheeto spills, but I actually really like the, I, I don't know, like the, the firmness of gaming chairs. Like, I don't wanna sit in a lazy boy all day. And for whatever reason, gaming chairs are just, they're just a little more perky. I've had like your Herman Miller air on. Like I was just like, this style of chair right now, like I'm more interested in this. Couple of great things about this one in particular. It's got removable armrest. They're, they're magnetic. Uh, you can have like several different styles if you like more of a inviting velour versus the plastic you're used to versus like a pleather. So you got some flexibility there. I think there's different things you can do with a little head pillow too. This sucker, oh mama, it's nice. Really good lumbar adjustments. All the things you would expect from a nice chair. And they've got an XL size for big boys. Also, I got a stool because I don't want people to know that I have a gaming chair. Video Scribe. It's actually this super, super old app for putting together like storyboard videos, but I love it. I've been using this on some of my videos. The Roast of Firm ones, they have that like intro sequence that shows the firm metrics that I do like a voiceover for. You probably noticed those. I love it because it's like dead simple. Looks like it was made like 15 years ago. And it can even be a replacement for having to show up on video at all. Like if you have a reusable explainer you're gonna make for a client, you can just make the visuals and then do the voiceover. There's a web-based version, but it sucks. I got a rowing machine and I hate it. It's honestly the worst. Okay, you know when that client sends you 40 smartphone pics of documents and your options are, one, burn the next hour of your life, getting them into a reasonable looking PDF. Two, tell them to go back and get a scan app and recapture everything. Or three, force them through your client portal, which should have a mobile app that like tidies up the pictures. So when I say scan, I'm talking like, just give me the document image, not all the crap in the background. 
nice and tidy it up. Well, Scan Straight is an app to give you a fourth option. That is just process all those images that they gave you into nice, tidied up PDFs. So for example, you've got these docs that are skewed and like have the desk in the background or McDonald's or something like that. It's gonna de-skew them. It's gonna try to flatten the image and it's gonna crop everything out of the background. For example, this person asked about like, will it actually cut your hand out of the document? And here's an example of it actually kind of doing just that. Now, if they capture these documents the proper way up front using a scan app or maybe the app for your client portal, this is easy, you don't need this. So this is your fallback. This is like the last resort. If you don't wanna feel like a tool for sending them back to go like take pictures of those 40 documents all over again. Because it turns out like doing that cleanup after the fact is actually really hard. And there aren't really systems to do that for you. The scanning apps, your practice management app, all that stuff, it does the cleaning up on the device which is what you want. Because you don't want to have to bounce all of your client documents to this third party service, say clean it up and then give it back to me. And this is why ScanStraight is a one-time purchase, local like runs on your computer piece of software that just processes those documents, doesn't bounce it to the cloud or anything like that, just all run locally. Did I mention I made this? This is my app, I made this because it was a problem for me. Okay, Fiverr and Upwork. I've been doing a whole lot of Fiverr and Upwork back in that hiring video I did earlier this year, I tested something like 40 video editors that I hired on both platforms to find a few to move forward with. One of which, fun fact, editing this video. Great guy, say hello, Martini. But I'm really enjoying pulling in contractors for projects right now because it's just better than trying to get an accountant to do something that isn't accounting. The project has a start and an end. And the real hack is when you can have an admin actually go in and like, pull through the ranks to find somebody who's great for that thing you need. Because the process of hiring on these firms is, is just that, it is a process. You're gonna strike out sometimes. There's a lot more testing involved to find the right person, but then once you've got a great person for X, that's a fantastic place to be in, to be able to keep coming back to them on a contract basis. These are probably gonna be peripheral things for your business, like an editor for your blog post or a copywriter for your website, video editor, Google My Business Consultant, SEO, whatever. But to have one on speed dial, and it's not an employee, it's just someone you're going on dates with when you wanna go on dates with them. That's a bad analogy. Chat GPT, were you even living in 2022 if you weren't using Chat GPT? I've got a dedicated video coming on this, but wowie, is there some wild stuff going on with this right now? I've been sharing a bunch of the workflows for this in my newsletter, subscribe to that in the linky link below. But a few fun things I've done. Create an accounting software. I passed the CPA exam with ChatGPT. I convinced it it was Steve, my new accounting intern. Set up reusable data transformations, like to convert a file from one format to the other. Draft some blog posts in your own voice. Just a lot of fun stuff. It's just, it's actually like really exciting to see what accounting like post AI looks like compared to pre AI. Feels like we're on the ground floor of something really cool. Much like this week's sponsor, Kick. Ha! So Kick's like, it's an accounting firm just like you, but it's also like a software company. They're doing productized bookkeeping. They've raised money from OpenAI, ever heard of them? The company behind ChatGPT, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. How much money has your firm raised from OpenAI? That's what I thought, zero money. Well, Kick's hiring accountants because that's what they do is accounting. So check out the link below to see their careers page. They're doing some really cool stuff. Automating this stuff as much as you can, but pulling in accountants to manage the squishy stuff like Amazon purchases or all the stuff you can't make bank rules for. While they're just doing the bookkeeping part, they hire accountants and tax folks because their sweet spot right now is like that small company who really just needs like compliance books. So how those books map to tax reporting actually becomes a really big part of the whole overall equation. So check out their careers page and the video description if you wanna work for a firm that is quite literally built on AI. Okay, practice management systems. I told you I was gonna spill the beans. I did it. I moved the old SS accounting firm to Canopy. New practice management system. I won't go as far as to say it was fun. Now it wasn't Canopy's fault. Just a lot, a lot of, a lot of inertia were taken in another direction. I chose Canopy. The right PM for you, I think is a very personal choice. In my case, we have a team of just over 40 people. Canopy's well suited for that size right now, in my opinion. Where carbon strength is in email triage, we have a help desk software we already love, Teamwork Desk. So that wasn't really a differentiator for us. And Canopy just has a really, really good client facing portal right now. As I touched on in the portal video, while I don't know that we'll go as far as mandating the portal for all of our clients, I do want to enable client self-service. And Canopy's portals are just like really good, really simple. It doesn't feel like 
ooh, this industry specific thing that kind of sucks and is clunky, but you give it a pass because it's industry specific. It's not like that, it's just really good. Canopy's also rolled out some really good updates lately. A really robust built-in custom automation system where you design your own automations. Local file sync. So you can sync all the files to a drive on your computer, just like you would with Dropbox, and it's gone pretty well. We're happy with it. The Sony XM4s. Okay, so I've been working in AirPod Pros for like two years, and over ear is just better. It just is. Especially if I'm working at home, it's, it's the only way I have right now to drown out the sounds of screaming children. Okay, you've seen this in some of the ads I've done, but I really did transition in 2022 from having a full-time in-person IT hire to tech guru, a contract IT group. Highly recommend, one less person to manage. You pick up the collective best practices of like, what tech guru is doing for all the other firms they work with too. Definitely downsides. You don't get the same level of attention as like being able to walk down the hall and shout at somebody to fix something, right? But honestly, at this point, I will take that trade off for the stability. We had an IT person for about 10 years and then one for about six months and then another one for about 18 months. And oh my goodness, is IT turnover terrible in a small business like that? Everything's documented, right? You got everything, it's all organized. Yep, see you later. That's, no, it's never like that. I think Tech Guru right now is looking at firms five employees and up. If you're smaller than that, another similar group optimized for wee bitty firms, Tech for Accountants. Check them out at techforaccountants.net. Trial days. Did a whole video about this one. I am still hot on trial days. It's become a whole thing and I like it. Now context is key here. Trial days may not make sense for every single hire, but I cannot stress enough the true cost of making the wrong hire. You go through the hiring process, you get them in, you work with them for a year, turns out they're a weirdo, whatever, they don't fit your culture, whatever it is. Maybe they stink at their job, maybe it's your fault. Doesn't matter, if you're not a fit, you're not a fit. But to find that out 12 months down the road, do you know how much time and money you just wasted on the wrong hire? So anything that I can do to decrease the likelihood of that, I'm gonna do it. For me, that looks like Literally like a one day, like six hour trial day. If we have to for the person, we'll split it over two days. Super flexible on timing because we want to accommodate people. But they get to meet a bunch of different people in the team. We run them through like a bookkeeping file. We have them write review points for a junior staff member to see if they're a savage. We pull them into like a topical discussion with the rest of the team to see if they can contribute to that conversation. You can learn some things and other ways you can't learn things, but more information is a whole lot better than no information. And honestly, it took all of one trial day for us to be like, oh, that's very clearly not going to work. And we're like, we're never gonna stop doing this. And there's, I mean, tons of hires we would have made thinking, oh, this looks good until we did the trial day and we're like, no, this is very obviously an issue. And man, oh man, like if we'd instead hired that person and invested nine months in them for it to not work out, oh mama, we just saved so much time. Office and Google, Templates, I know you're bored, but hear me out. Whether Office or Google, they work more or less the same. But basically the way it works is in a document, you use double curly brackets for a variable placeholder. So in this example, you've got name and email. This works with Zapier or Make, but you basically set up these docs and then run a zap and it will generate a complete doc for you with those variable placeholders. And there are just so many instances where you need to generate a boilerplate version of a thing, whether it's an engagement letter or a welcome packet, a contract, a cover page, a mailing label. These variable placeholders give you a way to generate that stuff automatically just as part of a workflow. So a Trello task changes to this status or ClickUp or whatever, just kicks that off. We did a whole episode on my podcast about how this stuff works. I'll link that one in the video description below. We also talked about Google Slides and PowerPoint. And if the last one wasn't weird, this one's super weird. But you can basically use it the same way to create visuals, like a slide deck or a postcard looking thing. And this is, it still makes me uncomfortable. Chad Davis swears by this, but you can do the exact same thing I just showed you with slides. So for example, let's say you're gonna deliver a set of financial statements or a tax return. If you're delivering that stuff over video, like I do now, have a designer make you like a cool slide and then just chuck in a few data points from that thing that you're describing and you've got a killer visual to go along with the video, make you look super fancy. And you can make all that stuff on a fully automated basis. Pretty rad. Apple shortcuts, it's an iOS thing, sorry. So not a new thing necessarily, but this shortcuts app, you can like build like kind of chaining actions and stuff like that. You can even actually trigger zaps, what? But what I've actually been using a ton is an app called Lockflow. It's an app that gives you widgets 
for your shortcuts, which in my case means I can just trigger shortcuts from my lock screen. So for example, I've got three of those widgets on my lock screen right now. I've got a light bulb for opening up my Notion capture page. I've got a calendar for opening my calendar and I have a flame for opening my email. But just think about that. You can put as many widgets on here as you want. They do all sorts of stuff, triggers apps. Oh, nerd alert. Haven't found a great way to do this on Android right now. You can open apps from widgets like this, but not like chained actions or like opening an app to a specific spot. So a little more limited. Podcast production. I'd never done podcast stuff before this year and I just wanted to learn more about it. So I made one. Uh, and I'll tell you where I'm at with podcasts right now and why I thought it was worth investing the time and brain juice and learning that right now is even though there's a million of them, I still think they're a huge opportunity. I saw a tweet that said they saw someone in Austin get arrested the other day for not having a podcast. And that is true. It does feel like everyone has a podcast. But here's the reality of what consumption looks like right now is video is getting more and more cracked out, more and more optimized for engagement. Getting somebody to sit down and watch a 10 minute video is really flipping hard. You see how much effort I put into these things? And I think if you knew the retention rate of videos like this, like you would be shocked. Like a YouTube video that people watch on average 50% of the way through, that's pretty good. That's like above average. So to get people to engage with video or to read a blog post where like we just skim things these days, right? We don't actually read it is so hard. But when it comes to podcasting, oh yeah, let me pop this person in my ear for the next hour while I pull weeds or work out or something like that. It's kind of the last frontier of like having a way to live in that person's head for a long period of time. And that's a really weird way of saying that, but it's how you like build trust with people through content. And so podcasting is kind of like the final frontier for where you can actually like get a bunch of time with somebody. Screen studio, check out how rad this is. Mac OS only at the moment, unfortunately. I'm sorry, at one point he was working on Windows, but I don't know. So basically, kind of like Scribe, you know, I'm a big fan of Scribe. You hit record and then you click around and do all the stuff that you gotta do. It records the screen, but it also like pans and zooms around to the different things that you're clicking. And it does all that stuff dynamically as you're recording. So you've got this super fancy looking video at the end, right? Isn't that cool? Okay, hear me out. I hired a tax pro to do my taxes. There are two types of tax pros in this world. The one who does their own tax return first and the one who does their own tax return last. I am the latter. And let me tell you just how good it feels for somebody else to be looking out for my tax situation. To shoot me an email and be like, hey, it's tax planning time. And I get to then ignore that said email. But it just feels so much different for like someone to be thinking of me. And it's not all just like living and dying by, oh, am I gonna carve out the time to do this thing for myself? Uh, most of the time, probably not. I highly recommend, especially if you struggle to get yours done like, oh man, like it's been a huge weight off of my shoulders. You know what I didn't like in high school was writing. But you know what you end up doing all day long as an adult? Writing. And it turns out your writing is probably bad. Easiest way I found to make it better, Hemingway Editor. There's a free web-based version anybody can hop into and it's got a paid desktop version. Super easy to use, drop some text in there. And it's gonna tell you if you're like getting too wordy or should avoid certain words. I try to drop like texts and maybe more complicated emails in there just as kind of like a final check. And you'd be amazed how many words you put into your writing that are totally unnecessary. Just me, hopefully it's not just me. Now, what's your top three cool new things you picked up in 2022? Share them in a comment below. Could be software, could be a desk chair, a plant, could be a back scratcher, maybe a fidget spinner, maybe a nice mouse. Upgrade that keyboard, I like a crispy keyboard. One of those over monitor lights, what do you think about those? McDonald's app, makes it way easier to get the iced coffee 99 cent deal.